Hi, this lesson is about evaluating limits at infinity. So limits that are approaching positive or negative infinity can also be evaluated. Sometimes the limit will exist and sometimes it will not. So here's a graphical example. We want to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x and as x approaches infinity of f of x. So as x approaches negative infinity means the values of x are going more and more to the left. And if you look at the uh, behavior of the graph, the y values are getting closer and closer to uh, the value of 3 along the y-axis. Um, you can see that at 3, it looks like I have a horizontal asymptote. Those are st stated as y equal to um, the appropriate number. So in this case, y equals 3. So as x approaches negative infinity, the graph is going closer and closer to 3. The same is true as the values of x get larger and larger. You can see that my y values are also approaching that horizontal asymptote. So that is also equal to 3. So both the limit as x approaches negative infinity and the limit as x approaches infinity, both of those uh, equal 3. Okay, so let's move on. Let's look at this from a different perspective, not a graphical perspective. Um, I want to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity of x minus 1 over 7x plus 4. So we want to know what is the behavior of this graph as values of x go approach infinity. So there is an algebraic way to actually evaluate that. And that is to multiply the numerator and the denominator of the rational function by the reciprocal of the uh, variable expression in the denominator with the highest exponent. So my denominator here has just an x in it. So it's not x squared or x cubed, it's just x. So I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the reciprocal of x, which is 1 over x. Um, and then I distribute that. So when I distribute 1 over x across my rational uh, expression, you get what you see here. You have 1 minus 1 over x uh, in the numerator, and then 7 plus 4 over x in the denominator. But as x approaches infinity, 1 over x and 4 over x go to 0. So the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x 1 over a very big number, which big infinity is something that we can't even um, imagine in our minds. It's so huge. That is approaching 0. And the same is true for 4 over x. It's also going to 0. So therefore, the limit as x approaches infinity is just the value 1 over 7. Okay, so here's another one. We want to evaluate the limit as t approaches infinity of negative t squared plus 3t minus 5 divided by t squared minus 5. So when you're approaching infinity, you're not trying to factor or, or do anything um, like the other techniques we were doing in previous sections. We want to look at the variable term in the denominator with the highest exponent, which in this case is t squared and then multiply the numerator and the denominator by the reciprocal of that term. So we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 over t squared. When you distribute the 1 over t squared across the three terms in the denominator and the two terms in the, I'm sorry, the three terms in the numerator and the two terms in the denominator, um, you get the result below, which is the limit as t approaches infinity of negative 2, because the t squareds would have canceled here, plus 3 over t, so 3t times 1 over t squared. That t cancels with 1t here, so it's 3 over t, so that's where that comes from. And then when you distribute to the minus 5, you get 5 minus 5 over t squared. Uh, similarly, in the denominator, when you distribute 1 over t squared to t squared, you get 1, and then distribute it to the minus 5, you get minus 5 over t squared. Now, be really careful. You cannot, cannot cancel 
the minus 5 over t squared here, even though they look the same, you have a sum and a difference and a difference in the denominator. Um, you can only cancel common factors when they are expressed as products when you're multiplying. Um, so now we're ready to actually take the limit as t approaches infinity. And like I explained in the previous example, 3 over t, 5 over t squared, and the 5 over t squared, they all approach 0. So you're really just left with the constants, negative 2 over 1, so I have a limit value of negative 2. Okay. So as I mentioned before, when you're taking the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity, when you get a finite answer like these were, um, those actually represent horizontal asymptotes. But we also have vertical asymptotes. So an asymptote is a line that a curve approaches but doesn't touch. So it gets close to it, very, very close to it, but doesn't um, intersect it. So a vertical asymptote, which I usually abbreviate as VA. Um, usually they occur um, where values of the domain uh, would result in division by zero, so restrictions to the domain. Um, and we state vertical asymptotes as a vertical line as x equal to that number uh, wherever you're, you have division by zero, so a would be a number. Um, and as you get closer and closer to, um, to A, as you get closer and closer to A, your function would be going to either plus or minus infinity. Um, and that's what makes it a vertical asymptote. Uh, your horizontal asymptotes are found by taking the limit as X approaches plus or minus infinity. And when that limit converges to a finite number, that finite number is your horizontal asymptote Horizontal asymptotes are stated as y equal to L or whatever that number is. Um, so there, there are other scenarios where um, a lot of the same work is done as what we would do to find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, but they're not asymptotes. They end up being a hole in the graph. So um, holes in the graphs are pretty easy to identify they would be associated with, with a common factor in the numerator and the denominator, and whatever the solution to that common factor is would result in um, a, a hole in the graph. So I'll show you how to find those. Um, so just in summary, uh, when you're looking for horizontal asymptotes, this is a, a quick useful way to figure it out and it's based on degrees in a rational function um, in the numerator and the denominator and their relationship. So if I have a rational function of the form y equals f of x over g of x, then this table applies. Um, if f of x and g of x have the same degree, and remember the degree is the exponent, uh, the, the greatest exponent um, in the polynomial found in the numerator and the denominator. When they are the same, then y, or your horizontal asymptote, would be the ratio of leading coefficients of f of x and g of x. So here's an example. These are two third degree polynomials in my numerator and my denominator, so their degrees are the same. They're both the have a degree of three. The leading coefficients would be the two and the six. It's the uh, coefficient in front of the variable expression that determines the degree. Um, but we know that two over six reduces down to a third. So y equal to a third would be the um, horizontal asymptote. Another scenario would be, what if the degree of f of x is less than the degree of g of x, meaning the one in the numerator has a degree smaller than the one in the denominator, as in this example. Um, so when that's the case, your horizontal asymptote will always be zero. So in this example here, I have uh, 3x squared 
minus 5x over 2x cubed plus 1. The degree in the numerator is 2. The degree in the denominator is 3. Uh, therefore, my horizontal asymptote is y equal to 0. And that's basically because the denominator grows faster than the, than the numerator. So as x approaches infinity, this becomes much larger than the number in the numerator. And again, any number divided by a very large number or infinity is going to go approach 0. Um, and then last scenario is that the degree of f of x is greater than the degree of g of x. The degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator. Okay, so when that's the case, then you will have no horizontal asymptote. So let's look at this example. The degree in the numerator is 4. The degree in the denominator is 3. Um, that means that the numerator will grow much faster, and this looks like it would be going towards negative infinity, um, much faster than what this would be doing. Um, so therefore, uh, since it doesn't converge to a finite number, there is no, no value that the graph is approaching. It's just getting either very, very large or very, very small. So, um, let's move on. Let's find horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So we want to find vertical and horizontal asymptotes for this rational expression. So um, let's look at the vertical asymptotes first. So we find vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to zero. The denominator is the expression on the bottom. So we set that equal to zero. Um, that is a factorable a second degree polynomial, so that factors into 2x minus 1 and x plus, uh, plus 1. So that gives me two solutions to that equation, but these solutions are not solutions, they are actually vertical asymptotes. So vertical lines that the graph would approach but not touch. And graphically we show asymptotes as dotted lines. Um, so if you do like an, an analysis of this, if I take the limit as x approaches infinity, um, remember that my, I can factor um, both of these, and so I'm taking the limit as x approaches one half of, of the polynomial. And so if I look at it from the left side of uh, one half, so one, from the left side of a half, and you plug that in, um, this will be a, a, negative, a, very, a negative number that's very close to zero. Um, and what that does to the entire expression is that it makes the whole thing approach negative infinity. So if, you, if you're kind of hesitant about that, you can try putting this into a calculator. Um, and that should give you... Um, something like one, two, three, uh, negative 10,000, right? So the smaller the number is in the denominator, the quicker this approaches negative infinity. And when I approach one half from the right, like we are here, um, then this piece right here becomes a very small positive number, a number close to zero, and because it's positive and it's a small number, it approaches positive infinity. Um, similarly, as you approach negative 1 from the left and from the right, you'll get similar results. It'll approach either positive infinity um, or negative infinity. Um, so those are your vertical asymptotes. Okay, so now let's find horizontal asymptotes, and that's when you approach... Um, the limit as x approaches infinity of your function. And remember, this is my function, this rational. So we are going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by um, the reciprocal of this, or divide by x squared. And when we do, we get this result. 
uh, 1 minus 2 over x plus 1 over x squared divided by 2 plus 1 over x minus 1 over x squared. But as I mentioned in previous examples, all of these, the 2 over x, the 1 over x squared, the 1 over x, and the 1 over x squared, these all approach 0. So I'm just left with the leading coefficients, which are 1 over 2. So y equal to a half is my horizontal asymptote. All right, so here's one that looks a little different. I don't have a polynomial. Um, I have 2e to the x divided by 1 plus e to the negative x. So e is called Euler's number. And it is about 2.71, but it's irrational. Um, it actually, that decimal goes on and on forever and ever. Um, so we can uh, do something um, here to evaluate my horizontal asymptotes. We're going to take the limit as x approaches infinity. So as x approaches infinity, remember that e to the negative x is the same as 1 over e to the x. So as x approaches infinity, 1 over e to the x, that's 1 over e to the infinity. So if e is about 2.71, raising that to the infinity power, this becomes a very large number pretty quickly. And so 1 divided by a very large number um, becomes um, 0, which is what you see here. And my numerator, as x approaches infinity, uh, approaches infinity, so I have infinity over 1, so the entire thing um, is approaching infinity. So when you get an answer like this, that is not a horizontal asymptote. The limit does not exist. It's not a finite number, so it's not an asymptote as x approaches infinity. Um, but as x approaches negative infinity, we have different behavior. Um, so remember, negative infinity, let's talk about the numerator first. If I plug in negative infinity in here, for um, 2e to the x, that's going to be 2 over e to the infinity. So as I mentioned before, I basically have 2 over a huge number which approaches 0. So that's why I have 0 in the numerator. Um, but in the denominator, for this one, as x approaches negative infinity, that would be e to the negative negative infinity, which is just e to the infinity. That goes towards infinity. So infinity plus 1 is just infinity. 0 divided by infinity gives me 0. Remember, you can't divide by 0, but 0 can be in the numerator. Um, and so therefore, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equal to 0. And that only occurs when x approaches negative infinity. Okay, so let's find the asymptotes as well as the hole in the function. Remember I mentioned sometimes you'll find a hole in the function. It actually looks exactly the way it sounds. It'll be a graph that's, that's, um, that you can draw continuously, but there'll be an open circle um, at some point in it. But how do we find where that open circle belongs? All right, so... Um, in order to uh, find my vertical asymptotes, I need to factor this. Um, so I have potential vertical asymptotes wherever my denominator is 0. So uh, I have x plus 5 and x minus 5. But notice that the x plus 5s cancel. And that's important because that means that there's only one vertical asymptote. And that's at the solution for the factor that's left x equal to 5. So the x minus 5 is left in the denominator. So that's where your vertical asymptote is. You have a vertical line going through x equal to 5. But the ones that canceled represent a whole. So x plus 5 and x plus 5 canceled in the numerator and the denominator. The solution to x plus 5 is x equals negative 5. That means that negative 5 
The graph is not defined, but there is no vertical asymptote. It's actually a hole. And the way you figure out where the hole is, is that you plug in the negative 5 in the part that was left over, the 1 over x minus 5, which is what I did here. Um, so your y value for the hole will be 1 over negative 5 minus 5. So that gives me um, a y value at negative 1 tenth. So that means there is a hole at negative 5 negative one-tenth. Okay, so now let's look for our horizontal asymptotes. Remember, we look for horizontal asymptotes by evaluating this limit. Um, if you recall, when the numerator's degree is smaller than the one in the denominator, uh, your asymptote is going to be zero, and that's because this grows, the denominator grows much faster than the um, than the numerator, but you could also do it the way I did before, which is to multiply by one over x squared, and that's gonna give you uh, one over x when you distribute plus five over x squared. There's still a limit here. So x approaches infinity, um, and then my denominator will be one minus 5 over x squared. And remember, 1 over x, the 5 over x squared, and this one, the 5 over x squared, they all approach 0 as x approaches infinity. So I'll be left with 0 over 1, which is equal to 0, which is exactly what we stated here. So I have a horizontal asymptote at y equal to 0. Um, so this one is a little bit trickier because there is a radical. We want to evaluate these two limits. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of the square root of 9x to the fourth minus x um, divided by x squared plus 1. And then here we're going to take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the same function. All right, so let's start with infinity. So as x approaches infinity, remember that the driver is the denominator. We need to multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 over x. So the numerator and denominator have to get multiplied by 1 over x, which you see right here. The reason why this looks different is because I can't distribute 1 over x across this radical. So in order to multiply radicals, they both have to be a square root. So 1 over x is equivalent to 1 over x squared. So I'm still multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same expression as x approaches infinity, um, but uh, I had to make that modification in the numerator. So when I distribute, you will get what you see here. You get the square root of 9 minus 1 over x divided by 1 plus 1 over x. And as x approaches infinity, again, these two go to 0. So I'm left with root 9 over 1, which is equal to 3. So that means I have a horizontal asymptote at 3. Um, but the behavior is slightly different as x approaches negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, this is a negative result. So I can't just multiply by the square root of 1 over x squared because when I square the x, even though I'm going towards negative infinity, it turns positive. Whenever you're applying this technique, you have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same expression because the whole ratio has to equal 1. So if this one is negative and this one here is positive, um, as x approaches infinity, um, uh, negative infinity, then I need to put a minus sign in front of it so that the signs will be the same and I'm basically multiplying numerator and denominator by one. So when I distribute, the minus goes in front, the inside part of the radical looks the same as before, square root of nine minus one over x, and the denominator stays the same as one plus one over x. As x approaches infinity, these two go to zero. 
I'm left with negative root 9 over 1, which we know is equal to negative 3. So that means I have two horizontal asymptotes, one at negative 3 and one at positive 3, and they are stated as y equals negative 3 and y equals positive 3. So that's it for this lesson. Give the homework a try. Good luck.